Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we continue our study into what the Bible says to the believer. And we're talking about what happens when you receive Christ. And if you was with us uh, yesterday, we talked about the Holy Spirit. Uh, the good news is when we come to know Christ as our Savior, we have, we're adopted into the family of God. We're, we're part of the, we're an heir, joint heir of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we're indwelled with that Holy Spirit. That He's in there. He's with us. He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He is in us, in us, in us and with us to the end. So we're going to look at, you are given a sense of permanent peace and rest when you come to know Christ as your Savior. I was uh, witnessing to a man some years ago, and uh, he was on his deathbed, basically, and I'd witnessed to him for a long time. And, and I was getting ready to leave. I had to uh, give him just a day or two to live, actually. He was still conscious. He was still alert enough. That he knew what was going on, what was happening, and uh, I uh, was witnessing to him, and I, he asked me the question. He said, well, how will I know that I'm saved? And I said, when you get saved, you get a peace of God. You get the peace with God, and you get the peace of God. You'll have a sense of peace. And uh, those that saw him the next day before he died said that he had such a, a peace that he never had before. And so that's the, the sense of when we come to know Christ. I know that when I got saved, I, that burden was lifted, and you had that peace that passes understanding. So we're going to look at that a little bit here. We see over in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, and Jesus is talking, and he talks about that. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so we know that as we go through this walk of life, there's a, there's a struggle. Uh, there are going to be some tough times, things we face that uh, it's hard. But we know that we can have a peace that passes understanding when we have uh, Christ in our, Christ with us, and He's walking with us, and uh, he's, he's our Savior. Uh, the idea of peace means to be uh, calm, tranquil, secure, in harmony with others. Um, in the Hebrew, you know, you hear the Jews always shalom. And shalom, they talk about, means peace. And that's, that, uh, when that word, they use that, it means even more than just having lack of conflict. That means having uh, a lot of peace in life, peace with your work, peace with your life, peace with your family. It's all this prosperity, all these kind of things. So there's, there's different kinds of peace that we look at. And if we look at John 14, 27, we're going to see there's a, there is a, the peace of the world. So in John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. There's Jesus talking to his disciples again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give, us, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, I'm going to give you peace. So what is the, the peace of the world? Uh, the, the peace of the world, they call it like, a, it's, it's escapism. It's, it's Avoiding trouble, trying to run away from it, uh, refusing to accept the facts, denying the truth, uh, denying problems. Uh, we we try to do things. You hear people say, "Well, you need to do something to get your mind off of it." You know, well, a lot of times in the world, that's what we look at. We look at what can I do? Buy something. Some people, if they're troubled in that, they, they just they can't find rest, so they just go buy, buy something new, buy new clothes or whatever. Uh, Anything that will get their mind off of what they're going through and, and trying to just get things uh, in their mind. and uh, That's that's what the world will do for you. But then there's there's the, the peace of, of Christ and of God. And that's that, that's the inner peace. That's the, the peace that uh, you can't, it's hard to explain this, how, how it works. Uh, you can have a, a calm, you can have a, uh, a feeling of uh, calm, a feeling of, of peace, a, a feeling of uh, self-control. Even in the most uh, adverse circumstances, uh, a, a loss of a loved one. I've heard people talk about that where they've lost a loved one suddenly and, that, and, and they're troubled and, and they pray and, and people pray for them. And all of a sudden they just have a peace that this, they, they can accept it and uh, they go on. So there's that, that peace of God and Christ and then there's the, the peace is a, a conquering peace. It's... Uh, it's independent. It's, uh, so many times uh, we, we figure that peace is due to my circumstances. You know, if everything's going right, you know, I can have a peace and, and be happy and have a peace. And if things ain't going right, then I get upset and that. But that's not, that's not the kind of peace he's talking about. Uh, he's talking about a peace that, that can, uh, no matter what's going on, no matter what the danger, no matter what the suffering, uh, people that are facing martyrdom, uh, peace, people that are... Uh, uh, in foreign lands that they play, say, uh, suffer great persecution for their faith, how they can they talk about that, how they can have a peace even even in the face of death, even in the face of uh, beatings and torture, 
uh, they can have a peace. And that comes from having that, again, that relationship with the Lord and that uh, trust in Him. Over in John 6, 33, it says here that these things I have spoken unto you, that, that in me you might have peace. And listen to this. In the world you shall have tribulation. We know that, right? We know we're going to have tribulation in the world. We've all experienced that. But he says, but be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. If we look at all these different things that go on. We have what we have in Christ and what we have to, to uh, help us through this world. And Jesus said, you know what? I can give you a peace that the world can't give you. You're going to have trouble. He said, I've overcome all that. I've overcome the world. Uh, there's a piece of assurance. Uh, we know that uh, having that confidence in God and uh, that's one of those things that uh, I think that really um, test their faith. See, it's how much do you believe God's Word? See, if you, if you have doubts about God's Word, if you, if you worry, if you're fearful, I, I often use the term, you know, uh, fear and faith can't walk together. And if you're fearful about something in your face, so then it means you're not really uh, trusting what God can do for you. Uh, over in Romans 8, 28, he talks about, he says, And we know that all things, listen, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purposes. But if you, you look at that first part of that verse, he says here, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So, the idea is that no matter, even when I can't understand it, there's things that happen in my life and the lives of the people, the people I pastor, and I don't know why. I can't answer the question, why? What, what is the purpose? I can't answer that except for that God has a plan. And to me, the purpose is that He's out to fulfill that plan. And so then we need the faith to trust Him. Just, you know, just put that complete trust in Him that I don't understand what you're doing, God, but I know you do all things well. And whatever I have to go through, whatever my friends, my family has to go through, I pray that we go through it in faith, just trusting you and walking with you. So how do you secure the peace of Christ and of God? So we give us some things that we can look at to have uh, peace with God. So let's look at uh, over in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Now we know that uh, we looked earlier that... Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, he says that you who were dead in your trespasses and sins has he quickened. So we know that we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were enemies of God. We were his enemies. And so I now need to have peace with God. I am his enemy. Now I want to have peace with him. And so how do I do that? He says, therefore, in Romans 5, 1, excuse me, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that, that little phrase again, through our Lord Jesus Christ. That the only way we can have the peace with God is through Christ. When we establish a relationship with the Father through the Son. And he says we've been justified, what? By faith. So when I put my faith and trust in Jesus and I shed blood as payment for my sins, then I am justified. Uh, that term, uh, some people use the phrase, just as if I'd never sinned. And we'll be looking at some of these things later on. But those things happen. That when, so then I need to be changed from an enemy of God. I know I'm a, a friend of God, a child of God. And so then we look a little bit further. He says we need to secure peace by loving God's Word. So we again, we get to the idea. I've read it just a minute ago over in John 16, 33, how, we, how Jesus uh, talked to him. And he said, these things I've spoken unto you, His Word, that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So, but the idea is we're going to have to keep the faith and trust in and what Jesus has said, I've spoken to you. Christ spoke the Bible and believing and trusting what God says. So we're going to have uh, knowing and loving His Word, believing His Word, and then we can pray about everything. We need to, he tells us over in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, and 8, that this is a real good portion of Scripture. It might even help you to memorize this because we all get anxious sometimes. We all get uptight a little bit. And so in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, he says, Be careful, which means don't be anxious. Okay, Be careful or don't be anxious for anything, for nothing. But in everything, everything, no exception, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, and here's the key, let your requests be made known unto God. You have to let him know what you want him to do. He knows what you need, but he wants you to come to him and show that you're needing him to help you to meet the need. So you let him know what you need and see what happens next. And the peace of God. We looked at the peace with God. Now the peace of God. 
that, that he can work in my life and bring peace, which passes all understanding, shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So see how we have peace. Now we have peace with God. And now we know how we can have the peace of God. But I have to go to him in prayer and talk to him. Prayer is just talking to God. I talk to him and I tell him what I'm needing or what I'm wanting. And then he'll respond to my prayer. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. And so we have to have the faith and believe and trust that he will do what is best. So we're going to stop right there and we'll pick it up again tomorrow. And we'll finish uh, this portion of uh, the study where it, where it talks about us having peace. Even in the midst of the most trying times in life, you can still have peace because God is in control. And we, he, you know without a doubt he loves you. He cares about you. He, he's demonstrated his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we know that because Christ went to the cross. While we were still his enemies, we weren't even born yet. We were his enemies and Christ went and he died and paid the price for our sins. And God loves us so much. If he loves us so much, he would send his son to die for us. He's sure not going to let us get away from him once we come to him in faith. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just I thank you for this day and for this time. And as we look at peace in the midst of this world we live in today, Lord, there's a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, things going on that we can't understand with pandemic and riots and all these things going on in our nation. And it, it will really attack our, our peace. But Lord, we know that we can trust you. So we just put ourselves in your hands that you work in a way that will bless you. Then we know that we'll have the best. We thank you again for loving us. We do pray for those that don't know Christ. We pray this would be the day, that this would be the time they would repent, turn from their sin, and turn to Jesus, and put their faith and trust in that shed blood as payment for their sin. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.